Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 80 today for the Austrian Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous one at the British Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A very dramatic Silverstone race, I must say, as it all came to a boil between myself and Pierre Gasly. We already made contact previously at Spain, but this was 10 times worse. Worse. It really was our best Verstappen Hamilton impression, but this time it wasn't at Cops, it was turn one at Silverstone, battling for the top positions, and we got spun, and we left a wave of destruction as we collected Yuki Tsunoda whilst we were spinning Yuki out, Gasly out, and I may as well have been out as we sustained such heavy floor damage that I then went, subsequently went on to spin the car into the wall and break my rear wing, and there was nothing left to do but witness an exceptional rest of the race because Teo Porcher, our teammate, was leading but made a crucial mistake and for the first time in a long while, Verstappen and Ferrari both had some success. Yes, they got a win. It was time for the Dutch national anthem to once again be played in F1. But it's been some time for both the Ferrari team and Verstappen. But uh, in terms of the championship, because myself and Sonoda did not score, it actually worked in Teo Porcher's favour, being on the podium still. And he's up there. He's extended his lead in the Drivers' Championship. Myself and Yuki remain on the same points. Gasly the same. Uh, you know, a big bit of a big jump for Verstappen. I guess in the standings but apart from that not major major shake up in the order but definitely after that Grand Prix there is a definite shake up I feel in the feelings of certain drivers to one another maybe how the teams are looking at things as well following Ferrari winning Mercedes again maybe not making the most of the situation because at one point Russell was vying for the lead and then fell away in that race and vice versa Porsche wasn't looking too great early in the race and persevered to still come through with a decent podium I mean, with the context of myself and Sonoda out of it, actually really gained quite a lot in that race. We're now at the halfway point of the season and it is time then to draw up the contract for the remainder of the season. And of course, as much as it's been maybe frustrating individually as a driver to have Porsche doing so well, still leading the championship, obviously as a team owner, he is doing a fabulous job. He is really helping the team, the Constructors' Championship. So we have, of course, re-signed him as a teammate. But that's not all. There has been a major shake up in the driver market. I was even shocked at it because George Russell has left Mercedes at the halfway point of this season and is gone to Ferrari. Ferrari won one race this season and thought, yep, this is the time now. This is the new era for us. And Schumacher, the person who hasn't won the race, is a problem. They've gotten rid of Schumacher and they've stolen away George Russell from Mercedes. It's Verstappen and Russell alongside each other in red. And that meant Mercedes were in trouble. They had just lost their main man. And somehow, I don't know what has gone on here, but Leclerc has been allowed back into Mercedes. This guy left Mercedes high and dry after one season with the team last year in this series. He's gone to Aston Martin. He's been given a championship winning car, potentially. He's been, not had the best luck, of course, and has been, you know, outshone by Sonoda. Uh, and now Mercedes, since they're in desperate times, having lost Russell to Ferrari, they have welcomed back Leclerc with no drama, and it's now Leclerc and Valtteri Bottas at the Silver Arrow. Unbelievable. Of course, for Leclerc, having had the mechanical issues, you know, not scoring, and just generally, it's not been a great time for him and Aston Martin ever since he won that race with them, so I guess he's actually had enough again. He really can't make his mind up. He's not had the best luck when it comes to moving teams, and he's moved back to the Silver Arrows then, and that has meant Aston Martin Honda were left in a pickle because they lost Leclerc. Although, to be fair, Sonoda's done such a fantastic job. They can just build, continue to build the team around him, basically. And they've gone and signed Zhou Guan Yu from Williams. So maybe a, a cheaper option, it looks like that must be, with Zhou Guan Yu. Because they're, they're confident with Sonoda. They just need someone to fill that seat. Someone who could be consistent and might have a good relationship with Sonoda, which is probably likely with Zhou Guan Yu, I think. And in Williams... Well, they lost Joe Guan Yu, but Mick Schumacher, having been booted out of Ferrari, needed a seat. 
feet and he's found his feet at Golf Williams alongside Magnussen. But what a madness of a mid-season driver transfer. I did not see that coming at all. Genuinely shocked when I loaded into the timeline of having signed Porsche, re-signed Porsche. I didn't think there were going to be any moves this season, mid-season, but wow massive massive one so ferrari clearly really confident after just one single win from verstappen there that they can now really build some momentum and they've gone and booted out schumacher which is really harsh by the way because for most of the partnership of schumacher verstappen mick schumacher has been the better driver he scored more points for ferrari last season but so far this season it's been a different story with that race win verstappen's now the big breadwinner and uh, and they've had enough of schumacher not delivering when the car is much better than last season so very harsh from the scuderia um bit comical from mercedes to have to tuck their tail in between their legs and uh, you know accept leclerc back after he abandoned them after one year uh, and then aston martin i guess really now just focusing fully on sonoda i guess for the championship in both regards so that's a pretty insane way to enter this race weekend at the austrian grand prix which is usually one of the most exciting race of the entire season but it's maybe already been overshadowed by just the driver moves we've had unbelievable so russell's in ferrari alongside verstappen leclerc's back at mercedes will be going up against maybe his old teammate yuki sonoda and the aston martin um yeah madness absolute madness for us it doesn't change too much you know we're still going to be fighting sonoda in the aston martin fighting to hopefully get points on poor chair but uh yeah you know and at the same time obviously people like Gasly will be in there but now maybe a reinvigorated russell and ferrari a reinvigorated leclerc and a mercedes is going to be a threat to us but speaking of poor chair earlier well i thought he was getting out of my way on this flying lap but he's dived down the inside and he's hit us and broken a bit of our floor thankfully i think we're gonna have enough uh, i think we had enough time um th that we're gonna get through into q2 i mean we already set a time sorry i mean uh, to, to get through into q2 but yeah very very odd because i let poor chair by on his flying lap and i thought he was gonna let me by here i even got a bit of toe but then he just decides to dive it down the inside whilst i'm on a flyer he's on an in lap now he's broken a bit of his front wing i broke my floor but like i said thankfully the time i set already i think it's going to be just about enough to get through into the second part of qualifying but uh, already not ideal you know i was hoping for a clean start to this weekend after uh, after the british grand prix but clearly not but it's a very messy session in general because fittipaldi has a penalty ocon as well where both the five place penalties so both of them may be caught up in tripping over people uh, as well and uh, it's a bit of a surprise for Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri in the McLaren and Red Bull they're both knocked out that's pretty big for them to to be knocked out Russell in his first Ferrari qualifying gets outdone by Verstappen and he's maybe realizing how difficult the Ferrari is to drive meanwhile his old car in the hands of Leclerc is up there in P2 incredible stuff Leclerc has maybe pulled uh, well I, I said he pulled a blinder moving to Aston Martin it, it started that way and then fell away so it looks like Leclerc has this thing it's almost, almost like you know when in football a manager gets fired you get a new manager bump Leclerc seems to get a new team bump he just gets really quick when he gets to a new team and then after a couple of races maybe falls flat at least that's what the pattern was when he moved to Aston Martin will it be the same here in Mercedes we're gonna have to see but uh, meanwhile, we just focus on ourselves in Q2, pumping in some times. That hopefully is going to be enough to get through. And uh, we were ready for a third lap, but it actually started raining at the end of Q2. So uh, no one else went out. And that actually meant a few people got caught out, including Joe Guan Yu in his new Aston Martin debut. Gasly in the Audi got caught out, which is good news for me, at least. That he's nowhere near us. Uh, you know, myself and Porsche are through. Sonoda and Dragovic only just about managed to get through. Uh, and Leclerc tops the session for Mercedes. Incredible. This actually might be the biggest finesse ever if Leclerc is showing that much speed. But look at the Verstappen. Look at Russell. Ferrari genuinely might have something cooking here. After a race win, maybe the, the, the momentum is going to be all with them. And Russell's pulled the blinder by also moving to Ferrari. You know, he just needs to get used to the car. Uh, and, he, and he might be there. But Q3 then starts. Very, very odd um, qualifying session, I must say, because it was yeah raining at the end of Q2. But as we loaded into Q3, I was able to go onto the dry tyre. So I just went out, darted out. I think myself and the staff are out first on the dry compound. And actually, to my surprise, it rapidly dries out 
as we're on our flying lap. So this is the end of our first flyer. We've got enough fuel for a second consecutive run. So we will go again and it seems like we're going to have to because the track is getting quicker and quicker. The curbs are a little bit slippery, you can see there, with a bit of oversteer for me. But the Stappen goes top, we go second place. We're 5.5 tenths down on the Stappen, just showing how good the AI are in these change of conditions. But the track is getting quicker and quicker as Bottas goes quickest of all. Uh, we're now all of a sudden down to P9, but we've gained 1.8 seconds. This is how quickly the track was evolving, and we go quickest of all now. This track is developing so quickly. You have to be out there at the right time. You know, we, we're P2 at the moment. Carlos Sainz has gone provisional pole for Audi, showing that that pace that Audi had at Silverstone is maybe true. And, uh, you know, he just got unlucky, Sainz, in the British Grand Prix compared to his team. Oh, his team also got unlucky. They both got on very unlucky. But we're second place. Leclerc third. Sonoda fourth. Russell P5. So two of the people that switch teams in the top five. That's pretty big. We've set a purple middle sector. We're 2.2 seconds up on our flyer across the line. It's only enough to solidify the P3. We, we gained 2.2 seconds and we only solidified P3 because that's how much the track evolved for everyone, basically. And Sainz did actually book in a time that uh, did get him that pole position. But Leclerc back at Mercedes on the front row. Russell P8 in the Ferrari. That's a little bit disappointing maybe for him, but he's ahead of Verstappen who's not managed to really control that Ferrari. You'd feel like he'd, he'd be on a confidence boost, but he's uh, he's only managed P10 then. And Sonoda P6 uh, near my teammate, Taylor Paul Chair. You know, obviously Sonoda, he's not been a great qualifier this season. He's been a great race uh, a race driver, you know, on Sunday. So really uh, don't take into any account where Sonoda really qualifies because we've seen time and time again, this Japanese his driver just loves to cut through the field and I think he might do again as we go straight into, remember, the sprint race here at the Red Bull Ring. So everyone now has got an opportunity to get a few positions and get a better grid slot for tomorrow's race, but we go to Fire and Lights and we're underway for the sprint here at the Red Bull Ring. It's a bit doom and gloom, but it's a good, happy start for us into turn one. We've gained one position on Leclerc and look at Sonoda immediately has got up to third place. This guy is actually him right now in the series. He is on smoke. Maybe, maybe we should have signed him as a new teammate. As we lock up, we've locked up. Uh, the, we've chosen the medium tyre to hopefully get some better tyre wear at the end of the race. Uh, but unfortunately, with the colder conditions, that tyre takes a bit longer to warm up. And clearly on the formation lap, others have got more heat into their softs. And we just locked up and nearly went completely straight on. We have lost two positions to Sonoda and Leclerc. And uh, it was whilst I was too busy gushing over how good of a job Yuki did at the start there as we see Valtteri Bottas going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Guan Yu and his new Aston Martin Honda up to seventh place. Russell getting to grips with his Ferrari. He's ahead of Verstappen right now, but uh, both Ferraris are being beaten at the moment by the Haas cars, which isn't ideal for them. But I can see, I think they've both chosen the medium compound attire along with myself, so they're facing the same problems as I am, is initially in this phase of the Grand Prix, we won't be that quick as we've got a virtual safety car that is out, and it's because I I think that was uh, Fittipaldi, I think that was, that is out of this entire sprint race. We've converted from a virtual safety car to a full safety car, so there must have been some sort of hefty impact or, or, or damage and uh, carbon fiber out on the circuit to warrant the switch from virtual to full safety car. And this is why, so Fittipaldi was retiring anyway, and he's then broken his car on the back of the Ferrari, but he was actually going slow anyway. So he had a mechanical failure and then just a double whammy. He gets taken out further by the Ferrari to really make sure he's out of the Grand Prix. But uh, So that slows everything down. And obviously we lose two laps. So six laps now, halfway through the sprint. So the sprint basically has now become a super sprint because we've only got six... Uh, five laps left of this entire race to go and now we send it to the inside of Leclerc hoping to maybe get the jump as at this point maybe the medium tyre starts to become the better race tyre in these conditions. You can see the sun is coming out as well but crucially the tyre wear should be creeping in already on the softs. It doesn't go very long around Austria. We've seen that pr uh, plenty of times in previous seasons so I'm hoping now and all the medium tyre runners are hoping that this is the time to capitalize on our tire choices. So no deer is going for the lead of the sprint. Sainz does very well to just pinch him in on the inside. But this could be a blinder again from Sonoda. 
from what was what? P7 on the grid, fighting for first place, but now we have arrived on the scene. Leclerc's still just about with us, one second behind, as we see Joe Guan Yu making most of his new Aston Martin car as he overtakes Lawson for P5. So Joe is really getting to grips with that Aston Martin Honda very quickly. Meanwhile, you've got Bottas versus Paul Chair and Pierre Gasly. Bottas the better of the three, but there were three abreast into that uh, end of sector one, and Paul Chair is having to really defend against Pierre Gasly, and he can't do anything. Gasly goes right round the outside of him. Right now, Paul Chair not really liking the Red Bull ring, it would seem, as we move back to our POV lap nine. So we've got three laps to go. Sonoda is looking to make a move, but I'm in the background also wanting to make my stance for this podium, for this potential sprint win, which of course will turn into pole position for tomorrow's full Grand Prix. We've got Carlos Sainz. We kind of followed Sonoda through. He went left. I went right. But now we look for the move on the Japanese driver. He hardly gives us any room to work with on the right. We had to dip a tyre into the grass. Sonoda was adamant about keeping that inside line. But no, I wanted the inside line for that right-hander. But it won't matter. Sonoda's actually done enough on the exit in the following corners to remain ahead. And uh, we're getting a bit frustrated getting caught up behind his dirty, turbulent air now underneath his rear wing. We move to the inside, trying to maybe spook him off the racing line, but he is soaking up this pressure. And it's pressure not just from myself, but Carlos Sainz. He is sticking with this. He's not quite there, but he is in the background. He'll have DRS as we fake to the right, go to the left, into turn one on lap 10. Sonoda really firm in his defense, but we're going to take the tighter exit. We're going to switch back him from left to right. We've got the exit. We're now side by side with him, but there comes Carlos Sainz, maybe, and the Leclerc as well in the background. Sainz on our inside. We're going to back out of that. And oh, it's a horrendous crash between Sainz and Sonoda. And we've been caught up in it. Now there's a car behind me. Oh, there's a huge traffic jam. There's a car that's been lifted up off its rear wheels. This is mental. Look, look at Leclerc. Where has he gone? How's he done that? I'm stuck between two cars. And Leclerc has somehow gone through for first place. This is unbelievable. In his first First race for Mercedes, back at Mercedes I should say, Leclerc now takes the lead, I've been disqualified along with multiple other drivers, that's our race over, that's pretty much most of our races over, what the hell just went on there, that was crazy, Sainz dived down the inside, Sonoda on my outside, I was the smart person, backed out of it, didn't think they were going to make a V shape and literally crash into each other head on. It was almost like Sainz was taking a left hander, not a right hander. And this is the on board then from his car. Obviously, I'm defending Sonoda. Sainz then goes right down the inside. Fair enough. That's calm up until this point. Like, what was he doing? What was he doing? I, ha I gave him actually plenty of room to work with. I really didn't think he was going to be that much of a dramatic crash to the point where... <laughs> Look at that! That Haas has a face full of the rear end of the Mercedes. Logan Sargent's cutting across the gravel to get up into second place in the Andretti. That Mercedes is just hanging there like a cow on top of that Haas. And everyone's got damage on everyone. And it's basically a, a centipede, a Formula 1 centipede, of damage. P12 down to P22. DNF'd. Amazing. I met 10... DNS in that sprint race and Leclerc has only gone and won it. On his return to the Silver Arrows, he's the race winner here. Drogovic second place, Verstappen third. Mental. Sargent scores for Andretti in eighth place. What a mad sprint and it means that's where we're going to start for the race tomorrow. 18th place. Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship except the very first back in 1964. It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 meters meters above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. 
One time around here is a distance of around 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into turn one or the tight uphill of turn three. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Felipe Drogovic lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Liam Lawson, Oscar Piastri, Ricardo, Leclerc, Mick Schumacher, Magnussen, Gasly, Ocon, Theo Porcher, Sargent, Norris, Russell, Albon, Sonoda, Perez, Sainz, Joe, Bottas, Enzo Fittipaldi. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. They've been involved in a number of costly incidents lately. That's got to affect their mindset going into this race. It's not an ideal situation by any means. When you get into a bad run like that, there's always a risk of frustration creeping in, which can cause more mistakes and locks you into this vicious cycle. Hopefully today they can get through turn one cleanly and stay calm for the rest of the race. I thought the biggest takeaway from this entire video was going to be the, the driver market madness of, of the transfers. But 10 DNFs in the sprint, that is another, that is a, just another different level as well. Mental. And Leclerc, having won the sprint though, isn't even on pole. It's Felipe Drogovic. Leclerc has got a penalty that he had to take for the full Grand Prix. So Drogovic is on pole. Verstappen second. You've got Liam Lawson and Piastri three and four um, with a very surprising high position for Red Bull and McLaren. We're down in P16. Sonoda 17, Sainz 19, um, poor chair up in P11 now all of a sudden, Gasly P9, so lots of drivers that weren't looking too great in the sprint before, looking amazing now, and then those of us who are at the sharp end have been absolutely done in by the way we all got like DNF'd and disqualified from that little, you know, park up job. Uh, all resulting from Sainz diving down the inside and kind of meeting Sonoda in the middle of the apex. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. A lot of us in similar positions where we feel a bit hard done by, we've got a whole Grand Prix now to try and make up for it. As we now go to five red lights for the full Austrian Grand Prix, we're underway. It's a bit of a sheepish start for Norris, for Sergeant Russell in the Ferrari, is able to go round the outside of the American as we try to thread it down the inside, but just have to back out of it on point chair instead we see Sonoda overtaking us on the outside line there so again Sonoda proving he's a very good starter this season for Aston Martin I'm trying to you know just take it a bit cautious because I want to dive down the inside we've got so long to go um you know we're not going to win the race here on lap one we're not going to get good points here on lap one we just need to take this nice and easy we know we've got a car that is quick we are fighting for the win but at the sprint it's just about trying to put together a clean race and hopefully we can avoid uh, some sort of, you know, race ending, absolute cataclysmic event like that happened in the sprint. But uh, we overtake Norris there at least to get up one position. We're still looking at the back of our teammate Porsche. But this is a replay then at the start. Felipe Drogovic on pole position. Verstappen second on the front row in the Ferrari. The uh, latest full Grand Prix winner. But it's Liam Lawson in P3. That has a mega getaway. And he's going to lead at the Red Bull ring for Red Bull Ford. And Daniel Ricciardo that was. That's right. Ricciardo in the Alpine. He's up to second place. You've got the two Williams in the top 10, obviously, from where they were on the starting grid. Leclerc, I think, has had a slow getaway, and he's actually gone backwards. He's on the medium compound, and uh, a few of the soft tire runners making the most of their soft compound, but Lawson was on mediums, and he just had an excellent start, and he takes the lead of the Grand Prix then. In very surprising circumstances, we now try to overtake Porcher, who's got, I think, a slight bit of damage to his front wing. Might just be cosmetic there, but he's a bit slow. He's chosen the mediums. I, along with many others, have gone softs as I saved this set of soft tyres, obviously by not going softs in the full sprint, but I'm trying to overtake Sonoda there. We really had to work for it quite hard and put him into a bit of a, a dummy and then go for the switchback because uh, he was quite, uh, again, very stern in his defence like he was in the sprint, but we've managed to, to sell him a dream and get up into uh, P12 and now we can continue our charge up the order and next up will be George Russell in P11 and you got Ock on P10, Gasly 9, look at that, Magnussen and Mick Schumacher 
Schumacher in his new Golf Williams car up in P6. This is crazy. Piastri P5. The Stappen for Ricardo is in third place, although he's just been overtaken, I think, by Verstappen, the two former Red Bull teammates for, from so many years ago now. If you look at the timeline in the in the game series at the moment that we're in, I think, what are we in? Like 2027, this is? Uh, but Ricardo and Verstappen going side by side. Alpine versus Ferrari. And Schumacher has overtaken Piastri. Mick Schumacher, having been booted out of Ferrari, is now just behind his former teammate in a Williams. That's incredible. Meanwhile, the man who replaced him is now getting overtaken by yours truly to go down to P12. Mick Schumacher at the moment is completely outshining Russell and showing Ferrari they maybe, maybe made a mistake. Or you've got to give Russell some credit though. It took so many races for Verstappen to get used to that Ferrari. I think Russell's going to have to take a bit of time to get used to his Ferrari as well. It seems to be a very difficult car versus maybe the Mercedes or, you know, the Red Bull that, Red, uh, that Verstappen was used to driving. But anyway, I digress. We move on to lap four. We're into P10 now. So into the point we're watching the two bitter rivals, the Frenchman Gasly and Ocon, fighting each other. And we're going to try and maybe swirl the party and get the two-for-one pass as we're side-by-side -side with Gasly. We go for the stern defense to the inside. Gasly comes back at us though, round the outside and the nerves start to build again because the last time we were this close, we came to contact at Silverstone. We squeeze him. We're wobbling about. We're both trying to see who's going to blink first and I think it's going to be Gasly as we're able to just squeeze him completely out and get up into P8. But there's just, you know, every time I get near Gasly now, it just feels like I'm raring for like a sucker punch. You're just ready, just ready for a scrap really. But uh, we've, we've we made quick work of him in the end and uh, we're well on our way Un unlike poor chair who is struggling along with russell russell's down to p14 poor chair p15 now what is going on with these two drivers russell at the moment must be really regretting his move to ferrari because leclerc in the car he would have been in is in p7 at the moment although it's not you know it's not obviously winning a race but it's still a lot better than he is doing now but i feel like maybe long term once russell gets used to the ferrari he'll be able to do something that verstappen is doing right now which is being in a top three position in that red car but saying that um a bit embarrassingly, he's actually getting attacked by an Alpine at the moment of Daniel Ricciardo and his old teammate, Mick Schumacher. I can't believe how close he is. He's right there. He's right there. This is crazy. This sprint, that sprint race that shuffled up the order has really energized this race even more than it would have been. Because like I said, this race is so exciting anyway on this game. Especially with these maxed out cars, I feel, with the slipstream effect. It's been amazing the last, you know, what, three seasons we've done on this game. But now this mixed up grid just added that extra spice. You know, Ricardo is up to P3. He's, he's, he's swapping positions left, right and centre with Verstappen. His uh, Leclerc and Piastri swap positions there side by side now as well. So, so much fighting going on as we close up to those two said drivers. Leclerc and Piastri and the McLaren and the Mercedes. Gasly and Sonoda close behind his. We are three wide now. We're on the outside, but hoping just to try and sneak through and get both of them in one go. We do so. Leclerc is caught off on the curb on the inside. Piastri's too busy fighting Leclerc, and I can just get two positions for one. And now we can set our sights on Schumacher and Ricardo. Looks like Verstappen's finally shaken Ricardo off his tail. It's still going on between Leclerc and Piastri, and Sonoda and Gasly are also maybe fighting a little bit. Sonoda's got up into P9, so slowly but surely, myself and Sonoda are, are making our way up the order. And like, you know, we've seen before in Imola, Porcher is not making up his all. I, I really feel, I do feel like this is one weakness of Porcher as a teammate and as a driver. It seems like, yo, what the? Ricardo, mate. Ricardo, what was that? He's coming into the pit lane. That could have been race ending for, for him or me. Uh, as I was saying, I think that's one weakness in Porcher's armor is he seems to, when, when the going gets tough and he's in traffic, he seems to just struggle that little bit more than Sonoda is clearly cutting through the traffic, you know, and, uh, you know, we saw he won the first two races of the season from pole. So he's, you know, it's kind of giving me Sebastian Vettel vibes. Very good over one lap. Very good when he can control a race, but maybe under pressure in the traffic struggles a little bit more. One man not struggling is Sonoda. Is there he goes. 
Rose making a move on Leclerc. And here we go, making a move on Mick Schumacher to get up into P4. Sonoda, I assume, eventually will get Leclerc. They're still kind of uh, sorting it out on the exit of that corner. But by lap 13 then, later on into this stint, we're nearing maybe the pit stop window. Lawson leads from Drugovic. Verstappen in third place then. Lawson, you know, to say Red Bull Ford and McLaren, those two teams who used to be, you know, concrete top twos for all the seasons we've done in this game. You know, to say they've been very slow this season, Lawson's not being caught by the Haas, neither the Ferrari. Uh, behind me, Sonoda is catching me. He's looking very quick indeed. He's under one second to me. Leclerc then behind, Schumacher, Russell, Gasly, Piastri, the top ten. Then you've got Ocon, who is just getting overtaken by his fellow compatriot and our teammate, Theo Borcher. Uh, obviously, Borcher chose the mediums. That also, to be fair to him, you know, I was a bit cr critical of him. That might be a reason why he's not, you know, making as many moves. Myself and Sonoda, we both chose the soft compound. So, to be honest, uh, I take it back a little bit. Maybe just the, the tyre choice for Porcher was a bit of a mistake for him, but I don't think he had a soft tyre to spare because he used a soft uh, in the sprint race. But we're now in then, uh, speaking of the pit window earlier, I think it's time to come in because I want to go onto the hard compound attire. Others may choose to go from soft to medium, but I think the, the, the hard, as I say all the time, is, is the better tyre for us. And um, I think with the right amount of pace, I think we could actually undercut, try to look to undercut Verstappen because in P4, I wasn't catching Verstappen there. This is our chance to maybe catch him and jump him. Is going early on the hard. So he overtakes Sargent up into P18 uh, uh, as it is right now. Lap 14 then as we go on to lap 15. So getting near to about halfway through this race. Watching Al Bono and Bottas fighting. Bottas not really, uh, you know, feeling as good as Leclerc it seems. So, uh, you know, a change of teammates. And it's no change of fortune for Valtteri Bottas. He's still going to play second fiddle to his teammate in the Silver Arrow it would seem as we now go down the inside of Phil Tapaldi who's still recovering from that DNF in the sprint. Carlos Sainz still uh, recovering and, and failing really from that crash in the sprint. He was fighting for P1. What could have been? What could have been? Instead, he's floundering here uh, fighting Joe Guan Yu because we've overtaken him and Joe and they're yet to make a pit stop, remember, whereas we've made one. So everyone we're overtaking now, they're very much going to be nowhere near the, the, the top four in this race because we're overtaking them having made a pit stop as we overtake Norris then for the second time in this race. The first time was on lap one, now it's lap 16 and he's still not off those softs. Incredible, incredible. So uh, yeah, a lot of stubbornness I would say from a lot of AI to, to not pit yet, which is foolish because they're losing a lot of time on those worn soft tyres. But um, yeah, at the moment, Lawson leads, Verstappen second, Sonoda third, that's because Drogovic has pit. Drogovic has gone early, so he's one of the few AI that's actually pulled the trigger early, which is quite good from him. So he's in P7, and I think he will stay ahead of Verstappen and might have a chance to gain on Lawson, you never know. As Sonoda now is in, Drogovic goes around the outside of Schumacher and uh, Russell, I think, but Russell continues on. Schumacher's in, though. Drogovic, though, let's look at where Verstappen is going to be in all of this. Uh, oh, no, Verstappen's not pit yet, sorry. Verstappen's not pit yet, but Drogovic... Pulls up to the inside. He looks slow. Oh, is this going to be a DNF for Felipe Drogovic? I think it is. Oh, it was a calamity for Fittipaldi in the sprint. And now it's his teammate, Drogovic. Not a great day in the office for Haas today. Drogovic is out. He, he legit could have been fighting for second place minimum. Uh, or, or first place, you know, because he was second, sorry. So actually, he was looking to gain on Lawson. So that's a real shame. Because actually, with that amount of undercut, Lawson's still going on his same set of tyres. That could have been him fighting for first place. Whilst uh, whilst I talk about that, we've made very quick work of poor chair because he's still on the mediums that he's yet to pit from. And he did give us a little bit of a squeeze, but he had really nothing to defend us with. And so we get up into P3 then, of course, one free position gain from Drogovic. And at this point, we had already actually overtaken Verstappen. So lap 21 then, Lawson leads the race by 6.3 seconds. He's doing such a good job at controlling this race in the Red Bull Ford. We're second place, 4.5 seconds ahead of Yuki Tsunoda. Verstappen is P4. So myself and Tsunoda, we've both jumped and undercut Verstappen there, who has now actually got Leclerc to worry about. Leclerc is actually gaining on him. Uh, 1.6 the gap, but he's reeling him in then. And uh, unfortunately, Schumacher has finally lost a bit of pace. Him and Ricardo kind of falling into the clutches of maybe Russell. So Russell slowly but surely is getting himself into a very good position by the end of the race. You know, we were talking 
him down a bit, you know, questioning, you know, the, the, the vibe going on with him swapping to Ferrari. But now he's in P8 there. Shaw Leclerc is P5, but Bottas out the points. You know, Russell's actually not doing too badly in his first race with a very difficult Ferrari, we know. Uh, and, you know, he'll only get better and better as we've seen Verstappen get better and better in the Ferrari. And it looks like immediately he's actually going to respond to the commentary because Russell goes for the move on Ricardo to get up into P7. He's now going to go and overtake the man he's replaced, Mick Schumacher, in the Williams. And he'll do that on lap 23. Will there be any funny business from Schumacher? He tried to give him a bit of a squeeze. That was a little bit, a little bit over the line, maybe, from Schumacher. And uh, just kind of, you know, uh, uh, obsolete bit of defense because Russell has the overwhelming pace. He's up into P6. And all of a sudden, it's looking pretty damn decent for Ferrari. Yeah, sure, it's nowhere near the win Verstappen got last time. But as a team, they have not been doing fours and sixes a lot in this season, a lot in the last three seasons. So this is pretty decent, but Leclerc might just try and ruin the party. Lap 26, 10 laps to go. Leclerc is on the outside. This is the worst set of camera angles I've ever seen in a Grand Prix. But uh, trust me, Leclerc was there on the inside. He's now overtaken Verstappen. So Leclerc back in Mercedes up to P4. I think that's probably the, as high as you'll get, but a sprint win in P4 is a pretty great first debut back for your Silver Arrow team. And for Ferrari, yeah, sure, Verstappen just got overtaken, but five and six is very, very solid. Meanwhile, back to our POV finally on lap 27. There's not really been too much to report. I'm trying my best to whittle down the gap to Lawson. We've got a little bit of a gearbox wear, but it shouldn't be a problem in terms of reliability issues or a DNF. But Lawson, he's kind of kept us at an arm's length of six to five seconds. But the thing is now, we've got a very interesting development. This is Lando Norris, Lawson's teammate, overtaking him a lap down and fighting him and slowing him up. Look at the gap now. It's 4.6. All of a sudden, Lawson, it's 4.2, 4.1, 4 seconds. We've gained over a second and a half to Lawson now. And it's because Norris, his own teammate, who's a lap down, has he's, he's quicker than him because he's on softs. Lawson's on hards. So he's it is right, technically, to overtake him. Like If you're legit that much quicker than someone who's lapping you, you can re-overtake them. We've seen that in real life, Formula 1. But in terms of... This is the same team. So surely you'd be saying, can you just leave him alone? But right now, looks like there are no team orders. Or if there are, Norris is ignoring them. And he's attacking his own teammate. He's in P21. He's so far off the entire race. He's a lap down. And he's continuously, lap after lap, going for a move into turn one, into turn three, uh, at the end of sector one. And he's just annoying Lawson, and Lawson's locked up now on lap 33. Three laps to go. It's a major lockup for Lawson. And all of a sudden, within six laps, we have brought a five-point-something gap down to under a second. Agent Lando has worked wonders for us. He's worked wonders for us. Um, it's almost like his AI in games remembered what team he's in. Go on, Quadron. As he's done an amazing job for us. Lawson at this point must be severely pissed off. And we haven't had to push too hard to gain this time. So here we are then, making the overtake on Lawson. He comes back at us though. We're going to have to fight it a little bit harder on the exit. Neck and neck. But we've got more traction. I think we've got better tyre wear than Lawson. Because I haven't had to push too hard to bridge the gap. Because all I've had to do is just be consistent enough. And Norris has held up Lawson enough to, to, to for me to reel him in. And so... Out of no, literally nowhere, we're into first place of the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's all thanks to Lando Norris overtaking his teammates under blue flags as we make a bit of a howler of the final corner onto the last, second last half of the Grand Prix. Lawson with a big dive bomb. We cut in tighter. It's a textbook switchback move to get into first place again. And uh, that actually helped us out because Lawson went so deep into turn one. 
He's now actually got six tenths to me. And look at Lando Norris. Oh my god, this guy literally doesn't care. This guy doesn't care. And we've spoken about this before. Red Bull and this game have a problem, at least in my career save. The teammates of Red Bull love to fight each other way too much. And they just hinder each other. No matter what the combo. Lando and Verstappen. Lando and Piastri. Lando and uh, um, uh, Lawson. Or Fernando and Fernando and Verstappen. Well, yeah, every combo that Red Bull's had in this game... Uh, they fought each other way too much. And Lawson, on the last lap, is still being attacked by Lando Norris. So he's now 2.2 seconds behind me on the last lap. Absolutely outrageous. If this happened in real life, this would be really quite a big controversy for the Red Bull team internally. Sonoda didn't have enough pace to, to close up and gain on Lawson the same way I did. So he'll hold P3. Leclerc P4. It's a very strong 5-6 for Ferrari. Leclerc will be very happy with a debut P4 back in Mercedes. But for us... I can't believe it. We've won the Austrian Grand Prix. And it is all thanks to Lando Norris. Incredible. At the Red Bull ring, the Red Bulls have tripped over each other. And they've undone themselves. And they've lost a full race victory there. We've got it. What a recovery. What a recovery. To, to be the biggest point scorer of the entire weekend. Amazing, amazing stuff. You can't fault the performance on the track today. A well-deserved victory. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I think the key here was just the quality of the racecraft, you know? I mean, how many overtakes did they make overall? I'm sure we have a stat person keeping score somewhere. And it was fantastic to watch, wasn't it? This is a strategic sport at the end of the day, but it's always really gratifying to see close-fought battles on track. It's what all the fans are after. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Probably one of the strangest race wins I will ever get on F1 games. I'm still coming to terms with what happened. We just got gifted a win, basically, by Lando Norris. Um, insane, insane. 10 DNFs in the sprint. What a wacky episode overall with the driver transfers, the sprint action. Amazing. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.